You have found the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. We call it Weather for Weather Geeks. Now, these videos are mostly geared towards eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania, but if you've been watching these videos for a while, you know we branch out and take a look at other uh, areas of the country and the world, and we talk a lot about other science-y topics other than just straight weather sometimes. And uh, in this video, we'll talk about the short-range forecast, and we'll talk a little bit more about the longer range, including the upcoming winter coming up at the tail end of this video. In the meantime, quick review of where we've been through the first 11 days of October. Today's high was much closer to average at uh, 65 at the airport. We had four straight pretty cool days, Saturday through Tuesday. Now the very warm start of the month means that when you factor in highs and lows, 3.8 degrees above average is where we stand so far in October. But that number is going to change quite a bit over the next couple of weeks. I think well, Friday will be a pretty nice day. Once we hit the weekend and beyond, it looks like a long stretch of pretty cool weather dominating for much of the rest of the month. Now, occasionally there's going to be some milder periods, but the, much of the rest of the month uh, does not look particularly warm. All right, it's been a pretty dry pattern, not only locally, but in a lot of the eastern U.S. When we uh, look at some of the numbers here locally, for the year, we're running a deficit now of 3.41 inches for the season. So taking us back to September 1st, the start of meteorological autumn, we're running 3.23 inches behind the average. And yeah, a lot of places have been dry over the last 30 days. Here's a look at the precipitation anomalies going back 30 days to around the 11th of September. You know, the Mississippi River is running at record low levels now from New Orleans on north. Um, and even the lower Ohio River um, near where it meets the Mississippi is running very, very low as a result of the very dry weather in the late summer and early fall season. Uh, we are expecting perhaps a more active pattern for much of the very dry areas, uh, those very dry areas, I should say, as we go forward into uh, kind of the middle of meteorological fall. We have some wet weather in our forecast for the next 24 hours, but it's not much. The clouds that we had yesterday retreated to the north today. They're up here. This is our next weather maker. It looks kind of intimidating. It's, uh, you know, the bark is a little worse than the bite though. There's a lot of dry air near the surface. And as that tries to push in late tonight, not much more than a couple of showers and a couple of sprinkles. Interesting little feature here coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. A little too late in the game for it to be uh, truly tropical uh, because it's uh, almost over land at this point, but quite a bit of rain falling across parts of the I-10 corridor. Um, I, I just mentioned the New Orleans area. They're getting some beneficial rains right now. Also, just not a very good beach day across parts of the panhandle of Florida. And it's a rainy Wednesday evening up towards Atlanta and Birmingham as well. Back here at home, not much coming our way, but maybe a shower, maybe a sprinkle or two as you head out the door Thursday morning, off to work and school, and might have to flip on the wipers once or twice as the day gets underway. A couple of features on the weather map on Thursday. One little weak front, cold front, slipping in from the north. The other a warm front trying to push in from the west. And because we'll be in close proximity to this cool front, it may even clear us for a time to the south. You know. It's not going to be a particularly mild day by any stretch. In fact, it'll be a few degrees cooler than today. But that warm front off to our west finally does lift to the north on Friday, uh, leading to somewhat milder air. Now, there's going to be a pretty tight uh, temperature gradient across the state on Friday. Along the Lake Erie shoreline, mid-50s. Cincinnati might hit 80 Friday afternoon. We won't be as cool as, say, Ashtabula and mentor and places like that but around here you know we'll hit 60 or so on friday maybe 64 65 especially in areas south of interstate 80 but uh, yeah the really warm summer like weather will only be a few hours to our south on friday that warm front just not going to lift far enough to the north fast enough for us to truly get in on the really warm air then a real good chance for showers as we head into the day on saturday the raindrops probably arrive before daybreak and showers will come and go. But notice this little slot right here, this kind of dry slot. This will be important for our potential eclipse viewing on Saturday. We'll talk about that uh, coming up here momentarily. But in the meantime, Friday uh, evening football will be a winner. We had a shower here and there last Friday, not much rain, and there won't be any rain this Friday. It's gonna be a pretty nice evening. 60 at kickoff, 53 by 10 p.m. Hey, it could be a lot chillier at this time of the year. So all things considered should be a nice Friday evening. Rainfall totals from Friday night, late Friday night, through Saturday night. It's probably averaging about three quarters of an inch. Uh, the GFS is a little bit of an outlier here, uh, showing some higher totals. Again, kind of an outlier. This will be, a, you know, one of the healthier drinks of water we've had in some time. And again, during the daylight hour Saturday, it does look particularly wet early in the day, 
with a scattering of showers again later in the day. But right around midday, I showed you that dry slot developing in the morning, back towards Cincinnati, Indianapolis, places like that. That little dry slot may work in right around the time of our eclipse on Saturday. Now, this will be a partial solar eclipse for us, about 44% of the sun's face uh, eclipsed or covered by the, the moon. Uh, 1 10 p.m. is when we reach our maximum eclipse, but this will be, you know, about two and a half hours worth of eclipse time for us. The partial eclipse starts at 11.51 a.m., ends at 2.30 p.m. I'm still somewhat optimistic that we'll have some sunny intervals, some breaks in the clouds around midday to check this out. But you don't want to look directly at the sun, of course. So how are you going to view this if uh, the clouds do part? Or maybe you have some uh, leftover eclipse glasses from... 2017 still uh, still sitting around somewhere not a bad idea to to start uh, stocking up a little bit on those eclipse glasses here with less than six months to go now until the total solar eclipse uh, crosses northern ohio and northwest pa and those those eclipse glasses may be a little hard to come by as we get a little bit closer a lot of people will be buying those up now if you don't have eclipse glasses you can make a real simple uh, eclipse viewer with some common household objects like a shoebox scotch tape aluminum foil, pencil, scissors, things like that. Uh, you're basically going to uh, cut a couple of holes in one side of that shoe box and uh, take your uh, tin foil or your aluminum foil and uh, add some tape to it and then uh, cover one of those holes. And then you're gonna take a pencil and kind of poke a hole in your, in your, foil, in your foil and that'll be kind of how you view the eclipse. Uh, the paper that goes on the other side of the box then is where the the reflection or the the image if you will of the uh, the moon covering the sun will be so yeah close up the uh, box take a look through your little pinhole there and uh, you'll be able to you know again if the weather cooperates you'll be able to see the uh, the moon's face covering the sun at least partially covering the sun in our area all right so we'll talk more about uh, the possibility of the clouds clearing update on that coming up Thursday evening. In the meantime, let's look ahead to the uh, winter. Uh, as you know, if you've been watching my videos of late, we're going to release our annual winter forecast somewhere around the first week or so of November. Haven't pinned down the exact date just yet, but it'll be within the first 10 days or so of November, more than likely. And so we've got a little less than a month to go uh, for the winter forecast. We're looking at a lot of stuff. I'm doing a lot of research this year. You know, we had a bust last year. We had a bad winter forecast, as did pretty much everyone uh, last year. Uh, things did go sideways. We learned some lessons as always. Uh, I've learned a lot of lessons with these seasonal forecasts over the last several years. You know, we had another forecast bust in the winter of 2019, 2020. And the reason for that bust was out here in the Indian Ocean. We didn't account enough for this kind of setup in the Indian Ocean where cool water was in the eastern part of the Indian Ocean, warm water in the west. It's called the Indian Ocean Dipole. And that really threw a monkey wrench into that 2019 2020 winter well we've got to set up like that again this winter and we're going to pay a lot of attention to it this winter this feature is going to be something we're going to keep an eye on here's our, our uh, el nino of course through here that's going to be one of the major drivers but i'll tell you the more i look at stuff the less convinced i am that el nino will have a huge influence over our local weather for the winter um, at least less influence than it would normally given it's a pretty stout el nino may not be quite as strong as it looked like it would be, say, a month or so ago. Um, we don't think this is going to be a super El Nino on the, uh, you know, on the order of 2015, 2016, 97, 98, 1982, 83. We don't think it's going to be classified like that. The reason why the El Nino may be neutered a little bit this year, in addition to not being as strong, its influence on the weather patterns may be mitigated some by this. This is a little weird. This uh, kind of tongue of cool water still existing near Hawaii, and then close to the uh, west coast of North America, and that combined with this really warm water out here, it's called the negative uh, Pacific Decadal Oscillation. It's not something you see very often in tandem with an El Nino, and it may serve to neuter that El Nino a little bit. So that's something I'm, I'm really doing some research on and keeping an eye on. So, you know, oftentimes when we have a strong or medium strong El Nino, that just, that takes the, that takes the wheel. It's the main driver for the winter. Everything else kind of takes a back seat. Uh, this winter may be a little bit different because of uh, the configuration of, of water temperatures overall in the Pacific and maybe somewhat because of what's going on in the Indian Ocean as well. So a little teaser of what I'm looking at uh, in between newscasts as I get ready for our annual winter forecast coming up in about a month. In the meantime, thank you for watching tonight. I'll see you right back here on Thursday.